Jai Ho. Happy to see all of you again. I just came from Boise. It's so cold there. <laughs> Yesterday was 20 degrees and was snowing. I have to go to walk in the mall, you know. <laughs> but very nice devotees there, wonderful devotees. And we did the home programs and Krishna Lounge also. They have started a few weeks ago and they're doing very well. And Now I have to return there because I got uh, two, three disciples, a future <laughs> disciple there. I have to go. <laughs> I told him, not in winter, please. <laughs> in summertime, I will go. <laughs> Krishna consciousness is the greatest adventure. Huh? Uh, it's the greatest adventure. Prabhupada said, one way ticket back home. No return, only one way. Don't buy return ticket. <laughs> Krishna Ashuram Bhagavad Gita. Those who come to me, they never are born again in the material world. So it's one way ticket. Are you ready for the adventure? Yes. It's a wonderful adventure. <laughs> the greatest one. It is the best thing that happened in our life to come to Krishna consciousness. It's the best thing. I was talking with Bhakta Mike that uh, he knows people who became very rich not just millionaire, billionaire. And they are not happy. Because before they were struggling to become rich, and, and they thought, oh, I want more, I want more. And once they have all this money, they are miserable. Because the goal of life is not to become rich. You will die, you're gonna take nothing with you. The only thing you will take is your karma, whatever you have done in your life. Huh? Somebody else will enjoy the money, not you. <laughs> 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 so what is the use of, you know, struggling so hard and trying to be happy in a place which is full of suffering? That's a reality. So real happiness is to be in touch with God, with Krishna, in loving service. That's the, the, the nature of the soul, to be happy, to be knowledgeable and to live forever. Huh? That's the goal of life. And Srila Prabhupada gave us the right path to follow. Hearing about Krishna, chanting the holy name of Krishna, hearing about Krishna's pastimes, huh? associating with devotees, and offer your food to Krishna, you know. Uh, be happy. Huh? That's the purpose, you know. And you feel the energy coming, you know. Krishna's blessing are coming because we're trying. Krishna is more anxious than ourselves that we go to him. If we make one step toward Krishna, he will make ten steps toward us. He's more eager than us. He doesn't want us to see us suffering in this world. He doesn't want to. But since we have free will, it's up to us. After Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, I told him, I explained now to you everything. Now it's your decision. What you want to do with it is up to you. Hmm? And of course, we should follow Arjuna's example. He took the right decision. Yes, Krishna, I will fight for you. Huh? Prabhupada said, I want to die like a soldier fighting for Krishna in the battlefield. We have declared the war against Maya. Huh? Maya is everywhere. But Krishna is also everywhere. Uh, so we should try to see Krishna everywhere and try to forget that Maya is not our real friend. Maya is there just to test us if we are really serious about going to Krishna. Uh, she's not bad. She's not e evil or anything. She's a pure devotee of Krishna. But her thankless task is to test those who want to forget Krishna. She will give them misery because they wanted to forget Krishna. And why give him misery? So they will react. When everything goes fine, oh, nobody cares. But when things go bad, uh, uh, you, know, you know the saying? Uh, there are no atheists in the fox hall. What, you know what is the fox hall? 
where there is war, uh, now they, they don't use anymore, but in previous war they used to make a hole because there no trees, no mountain, no stone to hide behind. So they would make a big hole. Uh, they would hide there, you know, shooting at each other and all this thing. You have seen in the movie probably. And they, that's called the fox hole. <laughs> So there are no atheists in the fox hall. <laughs> That's a saying, you know. Because you are there facing death. Any moment may come. Uh, so better we get ready from now. And how we get ready? Chant, chant, chant. Prabhupada saw a caricature. <laughs> An old couple. The lady was telling the husband, chant, chant, chant. And the old man said, can't, can't, can't. <laughs> <laughs> we shall chant now before we can't. <laughs> when the voice can, you know, get to seek better from now. All right. Let us do some chanting, then we can keep uh, uh, speaking about this wonderful philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. I, I brought my speaker with me. And thank you very much, Mother Rekha, for inviting us. Uh, very kind of you. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. Why is that? Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. Hare Krishna. Ah, uh, because put it here. Hare Krishna. Very good. Maybe too much volume. Much volume? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Hare Krishna. Well, can be useful, you know, when you don't have a strong voice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshanam Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantika Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamana Shri Guru Vaishnava Shri Shirupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Deva Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpati Gopesha Gopika Kam Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishavanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Bancha Kalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayvacha Patita Nam Pavanebhya Vaishnavi Namo Namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vassadi Gauravattavi 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare, Hare. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
particular subject you would like me to speak about. Could be any subject, you know. You have any favorite uh, Krishna pastimes or? Mm. <laughs> 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 Prabhupada said this uh, philosophy of Krishna consciousness is like a sweet bowl, you know. From whatever you buy it is sweet. <laughs> so you're right. Yeah. Any subject in Krishna consciousness is, is is nice, is sweet. No? Uh, at the beginning of ISKCON, we have a, we have a, something we called ISKCON bullet against Maya. You know what was? Gulab jam. <laughs> so when when new devotees wanted to leave temple, they will fill them up a plate full of gulab jam. <laughs> They will tell them, where you will find food like this? <laughs> That's true, I'm, I'm going to stay. <laughs> Hare Did it always work? Prabhupada said, Prabhupada, yes, in most cases work. Prabhupada said, uh, uh, our ISKCON movement is kitchen religion. <laughs> kitchen religion. It's our, our secret weapon, is prasadam. You know. This is a fact, you know. So, Prabhupada say if we cook in ghee, the meat eaters can give up meat. They test the, they love test for eating. Food cooked in ghee is very good for them. No? So, you were saying something? You were going to say something? Yeah, I, I was thinking about the Oh yes, that's wonderful, yeah, wonderful I prayer. <laughs> you know, do you know any of the prayers? One of them, favorite? Anybody here? Do you have the book? At home. <laughs> no, maybe they are. That's the first canto, a chapter. Maybe online. First cap chapter on uh, first canto, a chapter. The prayers of Queen Quinty. Beautiful prayers. So. Why so? Such an, an enlightened lady. 
pure devotee of Krishna. She, in one of, her, one of her prayers, she says, My dear Lord Krishna, so please give us more calamities. Nobody pray to God, give me more problems. Everybody say, please free me from the problem. But King Quinty was praying, give me more problems, more calamities. Why? Because when we are in trouble, we see your lotus feet. And if one see your lotus feet, no more birth and death. No? Thank you very much. He found it. I'm going to recite the verse. Uh, uh, so many nice verses by Queen Kunti. Beautiful. But no purple, only the verses, no? Oh, sorry. yeah, sorry. Only the verses. That's all right. We can read some verses. It's beautiful. I just, I just clicked on the first link. I didn't even... That's fine. That's good. All right. I'm going to read one of them. few of them. Why not? Kunti Vacha Namasye Purusham Tuadyam Ishvaram Prakrite Param Alakshyam Sarva Bhutanam Antarvahiravastitam Srimati Kunti said, O Krishna, I offer my obeisances unto you because you are the original personality and are unaffected by the qualities of the material world. You are existing both within and without everything, yet you are invisible to all. So she's offering her prayers to Krishna. I mean, Krishna was her nephew. But she offered him respect to Krishna. Why? Because she understood he's not a human being. He's, he's the Supreme Lord. Although he was in this world 5,000 years ago, mingling with people. And he was a coward boy, then he became a prince, a king in Dwarka. Huh? I mean, imagine, he, he, out of the ocean, the land came up because he asked the uh, Varuna, the demigod of the water, give me some land from the ocean to make a big city there. Of course, all of the all the demigods they obey Krishna because they know they are her servants. Ekala Ishvara Krishna Arasava Britya. Everyone he is the only supreme controller. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha Nadiradir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. And everyone else is his servant. Everyone means everyone. Even Balaram is the first expansion of Krishna. He feels himself servant of Krishna. He served Krishna in so many ways. Uh, he expanded the land of Vrindavan, Krishna's throne, Krishna's garment, everything. is his Balaram's energy. Lord Shiva Mahadev is Vaishnava Nam Yata Shambhu, the greatest Vaishnava, because he's always meditating in Krishna and his avatars. Perfect devotee, the greatest devotee. So that's why we worship Lord Shiva, because he's the greatest devotee in this world. So Queen Kunti is saying, although you came to this world, you was not affected by ignorance, passion, and goodness. You were above the qualities of material nature. Uh, and although you are existing within the heart of every living entity as Paramatma, and also outside, you are invisible to all. When Krishna was on earth 5,000 years ago, many people saw him, but not everybody understood that he is the Supreme Lord. Uh, that's why in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna say. Avajananti mam mudha manushuntanu mashritam parambhavama janantuma mabhuta mahishwaram. Fools and rascals derise me because they don't understand my transcendental nature and my dominion over everything that exists. So foolish people, they, 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 they deride Krishna. They, uh, even nowadays, some people 
uh, they say, okay, I'll give my interpretation of Bhagavad Gita. My interpretation is, the, I will tell you one interpretation. One, one uh, Dr. Radhakrishna, he, from India, he said, he given his own interpretation, that Krishna is saying, Sarva dharman paritya jama mekam charanam brajaham tom sarva papabhya moksha vishyami masucha is saying, Abandon all dharma, just surrender to me. Do not fear, I will protect you from all your past bad karma, sinful reaction. Uh, do not fear. But this mister, uh, he say, no, no, we don't have to surrender to Krishna. One moment, Krishna is saying, surrender to me, I said. Then to justify his rebellion, he said, no, we have to surrender to the inside of Krishna. He's making distinction between the inside and the outside of Krishna. You understand? Somebody with, oh, it's very deep. <laughs> deep fool, deep fool and rascal. <laughs> he's saying, he's offending Krishna actually, in a subtle way, not everybody will notice. Huh? But those who are expert in the knowledge, they will detect the offense. He's saying that Krishna has material body. Huh? That, uh, he's making difference that inside, outside. Krishna, inside and outside, is, is the same spiritual. He doesn't have material body made of bones and, and that get old and die and wear got wrinkles and lose the teeth and uh, nothing of that, you know. Huh? But foolish people misinterpret Krishna. If you want to preach your own philosophy, write your own book. Why are you using Krishna's book, Bhagavad Gita? You have no right. That's the problem, you know. Before Prabhupada came to the West, there were like 72 different versions of Bhagavad Gita. And there was not one single devotee of Krishna in the West world. But when Prabhupada wrote his Bhagavad Gita as it is, Many people became Krishna devotees, isn't it? That's a fact. Why? Because he's a pure devotee of Krishna. He loves Krishna. And he speaks the truth about Krishna as it is. So this is very important, you know, because sometimes devotees get sentimental and they think, you know, anybody who says something about Krishna is good. We have to see if, it is, if he's devotee of Krishna or just his, his philosopher, a speculator, you know. Like once two friends went to hear some famous uh, sp uh, speaker, you know. Uh, and they uh, have to pay money, you know, to enter the room and listen. And uh, when they came out, they asked each other, how was the lecture? Oh, it was wonderful, it was great. <laughs> Did you understand anything? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> me either, me either, but it was very good, it was very good. But uh, because they speak with flowery language and all this, but people not understand what is going on, huh? what he's talking about. Huh? Once I was traveling in India to South India, I was in Delhi to South India, going to Tirupati. <laughs> huh? So, well, man, Indian man was next to me. I asked him, uh, we were, I spoke a few words with him. And, and then I asked him, uh, do you know about Krishna? I said, of course, I know everything about Krishna. <laughs> Very nice. Have you read Bhagavad Gita? No. <laughs> but he knows everything about Krishna. Uh, that's the problem, you know. We are proud, you know. We think we know everything. <laughs> So, we have to be humble and acknowledge I have much to learn about Krishna. I mean to say, uh, once I was giving lecture in Mexico City, in the temple, I was explaining that God, Krishna, is unlimited, isn't it? And we are limited, isn't it? So, one man asked me this question. He said, well, if God is unlimited and we are limited, then why we are wasting our time here? I say, why? He said, because if he's, if he's unlimited, uh, we can't understand him. Because if we understand him, he stop being unlimited. I said, good argument. But I have another argument for you. If God can reveal himself 
to those who, who he wants, then he also stops being unlimited. It's not by our own power. It's by his mercy. And when, how we get the Lord's mercy? By you know, service, love, and devotion. When he's pleased, he reveals himself. Atasa Krishna nama adibu napavit grayam indriyai sevam mukehi jiva do swayamevas puratyada. The Padma Purana explained that it's not possible to understand Krishna with the material gross senses. His name, his qualities, his activities. But when one engages the senses beginning with the tongue and Krishna's service, then gradually the truth about Krishna starts to become revealed. It's a revelation. Huh? It's a revealed knowledge. And how we get the revelation through the pure devotees of Krishna. When we read Prabhupada's books, very important, please read Prabhupada's books. Very important. I, I came to know very few devotees read Prabhupada's books. And, and that's why we need more philosophy to understand the problems we are having in life and how to overcome them, how to be fixed in our determination uh, to, to love Krishna, to serve Him, and to go back to Him. That's the purpose of human life. Uh, we are part of Him. We belong to Him. Mamai vamso jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana sant manasastra nindriyani praktitistani karshati and the Bhagavad Gita is now explained, uh, the living entities who are in this world are part of me and are eternal. But because, they are, because of the conditioning to the mind and the senses, they are struggling in this material world. So struggling is going on everywhere to survive. Nobody wants to get sick, old, or die. But the laws of nature are so strong, nobody can escape those, those uh, laws of nature. Huh? Samadhi said, we don't need God to explain the universe. We have the laws of nature to explain it. You know who said that? One famous atheist, scientist, Steve Hawkins. Steve Hawkins. Yeah, he said that. But see his logic, no? He's saying that we don't need God to explain the universe. He's atheist. He's saying we have the laws of nature to explain. And who's the lawmaker? <laughs> it's a simple question. Uh, laws don't make themselves. Is it? Doesn't make sense. If there are laws, must be a lawmaker. Simple, simple thing. Such a simple thing that even a child can understand, big scientists can't understand. Why? Because Mayaya Paharita Gyan, his knowledge is being dropped by illusion. He's covered, his intelligence is covered to see the spiritual side of, of the world. Huh? See? So we are very fortunate to be in Krishna consciousness and try to understand Krishna. And Prabhupada once said, don't try to understand Krishna, just love him. <laughs> I mean to say, of, that means we can't understand him completely, but something we have to understand huh? enough to chant his holy name and to want to love and serve him. You know, meaning uh, in the sky many birds are flying. Some birds fly higher than others, huh? but they are in the same sky. In the same way, all devotees are trying to to reach Krishna, to understand Krishna. But some of them are flying higher than others. <laughs> and those who are flying higher, they can help those who are down there. I will tell you the story. Uh, I, wrote, I wrote the story. <laughs> Maybe you heard it from me uh, some time ago. It has its moral teaching, you know. One, one uh, stormy night, uh, uh, an eagle's uh, eggs uh, fell from the nest and came down the hill, you know, without scratch, maybe one small scratch. <laughs> Next day morning, uh, one chicken found the egg, you know, and put it in her, in her nest along with the other eggs. And after a few weeks, all small uh, chicken were born and uh, 
and one small eagle was amongst them. <laughs> so the hen, uh, she was feeding the eagle also, so the eagle thought maybe I was, he was looking at the others, I thought maybe I'm one of them, you know. So when they followed the mother behind, he also may follow behind them, you know. And, and one day, the eagle, the small uh, Chota eagle, looked at the sky, and he saw a big eagle fly in the sky. So uh, he asked his mother hen, Mother, what is this, uh, this bird is flying so high? Oh, that's an eagle, but you are a chicken. <laughs> don't, don't think otherwise, don't think otherwise. Huh? You are my son, these are your brothers, this, this is your place to live. Sure, 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 no doubt. Poor eagle, no? <laughs> he was cheated. <laughs> and what is the teaching of that? Huh? Do you know what is the teaching? If you want to fly like an eagle, don't listen to the chickens. <laughs> Meaning, if you want to get a spiritual advancement, don't listen to materialistic people who are ignorant of the truth. That's the meaning. But the story doesn't end there. The big eagle flying up in the sky, he with his eagle eye, he saw the small eagle down there. So he came down and he called him, what are you doing with these chickens? <laughs> well, I live here, this is my community, mother and brother is here. No, 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 you are an eagle like me. But they assured me I'm a chicken. Don't listen to them, they are not telling you the truth. Would you like me to, to teach you how to fly like me? Oh yeah, I saw you flying so beautifully. Yeah. Please teach me, okay, come on my back. <laughs> I will take you to teach you. That's the guru, you know, that's the guru. And the small eagle is, <laughs> The soul who forgot who is he actually. <laughs> that is a spirit soul. So he took him in his back uh, to teach him. He was grateful. He thanked the, the chickens for their help <laughs> and say goodbye. You know? <laughs> and do you know how, how eagles teach their offspring how to fly? You know how? They push them out of the nest. I've seen the documentaries. Push them out of the nest. But only when their when their uh, when their capability is there, when their you know when their wings are grown enough, you know. Of course, they fly and they land in a little place and they keep flying down. <laughs> they can't go up. <laughs> uh, they're struggling, you know. But they will not do it by themselves. They need a little push to do it. Uh, in the same way, we all need a little push to make spiritual advancement, you know. Yes, become devotee, chant Hare Krishna, follow the principles, become happy. You can do it, yes. Uh, come on, you are born to fly. <laughs> huh? Do you know how the eagles get ready to fly in the morning? They wait until sunrise. When the, when the sun is up there, they open up their wings and heat them under, under the sun. And when the wings are warm enough, they take flight. So in the same way, if we wake up early and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. We get heated up and we take uh, flight back to Krishna back to a real eternal home. This material world is not a real home. We are foreigners here. It's a strange land. We are not meant to remain here for much time. We only have a little time allotted to stay here and then we don't know where we're going. Next life you don't know what's gonna happen. But if we get ready from now, become Krishna conscious, then Krishna assures you us. Jamma karama chame divyam evam yoviti tattva tahatvak tadeham punar jamma naiti ma meti sarjuna. Arjuna, those who understand the transcendental nature of my birth and activity, jamma karma. Divyam, divine, they are not uh, material. 
They are divine. Huh? They don't come back to this material world. They come to me, Krishna said. So that's Krishna's assurance. And what means to understand Krishna in true? To understand Krishna in true means we believe every word he say in Bhagavad Gita. We accept him as the Supreme Lord. We accept that it's the best for our real benefit in life is to, to surrender to him. And voluntarily, lovingly. Krishna doesn't want to force anyone, you know. And Boise or somebody asked me this question of why there is so much evil in the world. I told him, well, yes, it's a good question. We see so much evil going on, people killing each other, wars here and there and everywhere. People struggling, people dying, you know. Uh, and why is why there is so much evil in the world? I told him. Actually, uh, he, because the argument, I told him once I gave a lecture in uh, in uh, the country El Salvador, one uh, university. It was a the theological department in the university. They speak about God, and all. so the student asked me this question. If God created the universe, that means he also created evil. Because there is a lot of evil in the world. So how can you explain that God is being good, create something bad? I told him, no, uh, let me try to explain to you. Do you believe that there is darkness? He said, yes. He said, no, darkness is only the absence of light. If we turn now off the light now in this room, and when, then we turn it on again, we, we will see half the room in darkness, half in light fighting to stay. No, <laughs> that's a science, science fiction idea, you know. So darkness doesn't exist, it's only the absence of light. In the same way, God didn't create evil. We create evil when we give our back to God, when we ignore God. So that is, that is our responsibility, not, not, not God's fault, you know. Uh, but then, uh, I was asked then, why God doesn't force everyone to be good? He can he have this power. He can do it if he wants. Of course he can. But he's not going to do it. Why? Because he wants us voluntarily to, to accept him, to obey him. He doesn't want to force anyone. That's madness. Imagine a madman with a knife on one girl neck. Will you? Will, do you love me? Of course, I will. I love you. I love you very much. <laughs> Anybody can love like this, but it's not real love. Is it? Is it? Real love is voluntarily, you know. So Krishna also wants us to love him voluntarily. So he gave us the chance in this material world. You can choose to do it or not to do it. It's up to you. Huh? But he's telling us, this is good for you. Believe me, I know better. <laughs> I created this world. I know the purpose of this world and, and the entanglement and the illusion. I know everything. And I'm teaching you, not just to Arjun, to everyone. Prabhupada once visited the Gita Center in India and he asked them, why you don't have the painting, the picture of the speaker of Bhagavad Gita? You only have a lamp, the picture of a lamp, <laughs> the light. <laughs> what about the speaker of the light? No. They challenged, they said, uh, well, uh, it is said in the Gita, uh, those who are, have equal vision, samadarshina, they see everybody equal. The elephant, the dog, the dog eater, the brahmana, the, should they see everybody equal. What is your samadarshina? What is your equal vision you have? Can you please explain to us? And Prabhupada said, my samadarshina equal vision is, why only Indian have the right to know Bhagavad Gita? Why not all the world 
need Bhagavad Gita. Krishna didn't speak only for the Hindus. He spoke for every soul, for every human being. And I'm taking this knowledge all over the world because I see all human beings deserve to have this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. They were, they were all, yes, <laughs> you're right. And that's a fact, you know. We are all eternal spirit soul. We deserve to have this knowledge because we are part of of the Supreme. We belong to Him. We came from Him. And our destiny is to go back to Him, be eternally happy. No more suffering. Krishna wants that. And He has His plan for everyone. And, and what is the plan? Whatever time you have, please don't misuse it. Chant Hare Krishna. If you have the free time, chant Hare Krishna. Read the books. Huh? Learn the science of bhakti, devotional service. Great science. It's not some sentimental thing. It's real knowledge. Prabhupada said university knowledge is not real knowledge. It's just an art to, to learn some ability to, get, to have a, an honest job, you know. You know, to earn your livelihood. But real knowledge is Atma Tattva, to know the truth about the soul. Oh, that's real education. Spiritual education is the real education. And that's what uh, uh, Krishna Consciousness Movement is going to try to do all over the world. You see devotees, they, they go universities to preach, they go everywhere. They try to give people books. Uh, and do you know that uh, uh, now uh, Bhagavad Gita is in Arabic and it's going to uh, all the Arabic countries? And even one emir, one prince from, from those countries, he, want, uh, he wants the, uh, the devotee to speak about Bhagavad Gita. He's allowing that. In a cultural sense, you know, like a cultural thing, not like a religion, but... Uh, because they have their prejudice also. But, but many Arabian people come to America for vacation, for anything, and devotees are giving them books in Arabic. They go back to their country, they throw all the books there. So Krishna's entering now <laughs> everywhere there. <laughs> See? It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Hare Krishna. So thank you very much for coming and listening. If you have any question or comment, uh, please do. We can have a little discussion, conversation. Good question. Please do. So, um, I was in the Bhagavad Gita class lately, and uh, Dravida Prabhu mentioned that in the spiritual world, even the rocks are conscious. That's correct. Um, so, my question is, this uh, earth, planet earth, is it the image of uh, spiritual world or is the image of heavenly planet? This earth planet and also the heavenly planet are, are reflections, reflections of the original eternal world, the spiritual world, Golok Vrindavan, by Kunta. Everything we see here is, it's like you go to a lake and you see the, the trees the shadow of the tree in the lake, the trunk is upward, the leaves are downward. So in the same way, if you stand in front of a mirror chanting Japa, it looks like you are chanting with your left hand, <laughs> not the right hand, is it? So in the same way, the material world is like that. Either heavenly planet or this planet is reflecting, we are the, the negative copy, the original is there. And there, everything is conscious. The water, Yamuna water, when Krishna passed the next Yamuna river, water, river, the, the Yamuna, with its wave, take a lotus flower and put it at Krishna's feet as an offering. Everything is conscious, Krishna conscious. Hmm? It's difficult to understand because we have no experience of that. <laughs> Something like that, no? But there's a fact. There is everything is alive. And there is no, no need for, 
sun or electricity or fire because everything is self-fulgent. Huh? But when Krishna wants to dance with the gopi, there is a night and there is a full moon, beautiful, and there is a nice breeze going on and the jasmine aromas, you know. <laughs> Krishna created everything according to his desire. No? Prabhu, where it's mentioned, where you learned about the spiritual world, any specific book or...? Yes, if you reach Rima Bhavatam, uh, in the uh, third canto, it is a description of the spiritual world by Kunta. Uh, then at the, in the tenth canto, you will find the description of Golok Brindavan. It is there. Brahma Samhita also, of course. That's a very important book. Uh, it is described that the spiritual world, Golok, is like a lotus flower. And have many petals, you know, different sections. When Krishna comes to this world, he brings that world here, like an embassy. If you want to go there, you have to get visa first. <laughs> <laughs> so it's permanent residency when we are going there? Yeah, that's permanent residency. <laughs> citizenship, citizenship. <laughs> Immediately, citizenship. So, uh, sometime we read in the Shastra that Krishna and Vrindavan is going from one place to another place in, in a few minutes. But they are very far from each other. How he can, he's running very fast like flash or something? No. <laughs> because it's like a lotus flower, Krishna, uh, okay, shrink it, then becomes close. He just jump there. <laughs> and then open up back again. It's a lotus flower. We can see it that way, we just see land, you know. But the higher vision, you know, you can see everything. Very, very much deeper, you know. And that comes naturally with the purification, you know, of the heart. Then more through are, are revealed, Krishna revealed to you, you know, like that. It's like children, you know. Children sometimes, they may watch an horror movie and they were going to sleep, they see a monster beneath the bed and the closet, you know. <laughs> They're afraid to sleep even. But if the father takes them to Universal Studio and they see all the makeup and all the, you know, all this thing that they are not real monsters, just, you know, makeup, uh, then they lose fear, understand? So in the same way, Krishna show us that this material world, this big illusion, is not real. Is made up. It looks real. But it's not real in the sense it's temporary. It is real in the sense it is uh, it's not imagination. It is existing. But it's, te it's temporary. It's not permanent. Therefore it's an illusion. It's like you see a mirage uh, when sometime in the summertime very hot you're driving your car and you see water and the, and the road, but you know there is no water there, but you see it, you know. But that proves that not everything we see is real. And things we can't see, they can, they can be real. Is it? We don't see the soul, but we know it is there. We can't see the mind. How do we know, how do we know you have a mind? Because you are thinking, feeling. Desiring that the symptom there is mind, and from where it is coming, it's coming from the soul because without the soul, nor the body nor the mind have life. So we have to divert our way of thinking, feeling, and desiring toward Krishna's service. When we divert it to enjoy this world, we are entangled. We are entangled. It's difficult to get out of that. You know the story of Alexander the Great? Yeah. Uh, there, there was a big knot, very complicated knot, and say whoever can and do this knot become the king. So many people came to try, nobody could. And Alexander came with a sword and he cut it. 
<laughs> Say, one moment that was not that. Well, they didn't explain how to cut it. The important is to do it. <laughs> so he became the king. <laughs> Nobody thought about it, only he. <laughs> like like uh, Cristobal Columbus, you know? He went to and uh, found uh, America, no? And when he went back to Spain, the king and the queen, they wanted to, you know, congratulate him and offer the feast in his honor, you know. So many, many more people from the monarchy, princes and, you know, dukes and all, came to greet him and have a dinner with him. So one of them challenged him, said, well, anybody could have done what you did, you know. Huh? If they have the, they could have done it, anyone. And uh, Christopher Columbus challenged them, okay, then if that is true, then I challenge all of you. Can any of you make this, they had a hard eggs, you know, on the table. And, and can any of you make this egg stand on the table? They all tried, <laughs> nobody said, so they said impossible. Can you do it? Yes. He grabbed the egg and smashed it against the table <laughs> and stand it up. Oh, but that's cheating you. Well, I, I didn't say how you have to do it. You have to find a way to do it. It's up to you. You, you, didn't, you didn't thought about it. I thought about there is another world there in the sea. It was my original idea. Or of course, it was not the first one to go to the Americas. You know that. There are proofs that other people came before him. But many, many, long time ago, you know. You know, in Mexico, they found uh, uh, in the water cave in Merida, an archaeological city. Uh, they found in a water cave words written in Sanskrit, 3,000 years old. So somebody must have come from India to there to write those things in Sanskrit. The original people don't know Sanskrit. So there are proofs like that. There was connection. Previously, they have Viman. They could fly. Don't think that only in modern time they made the airplane. They could have. Many things we don't know from ancient world, you know. But there, there is information. Any other comment, question? Thank you. Anybody or online? Yeah, we have uh, 30 people. 30 people. Oh, 30 people. What's up? Great. Wonderful. Anybody has a comment or question? Uh -huh. Okay. We have one from the Buddhist group, but he will ask Okay. Hare Krishna to everyone. Thank you for watching our home program here in San Diego. With so nice devotee. Please show all the devotees to the viewers so they know <laughs> I'm not alone here. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Very good. Hare Krishna. Very nice. So tomorrow we have another program. At who's home? Oh, wonderful. Thank you for inviting us. Is uh, What time we should be there? 11. 11.30, say the program. <laughs> well, we say 11, so yeah. people at least arrive at 11.30, isn't it? Indian time. Indian time, okay. <laughs> All right, very good. Very good. How far is from the temple? 25 miles. Oh, that's good. Okay. Very good, very good. Okay, so thank you very much for inviting us and uh, hope to see you, some of you tomorrow, I hope. <laughs> uh, Sunday is a Kadashi, by the way, if you don't know. And that day in the evening I'm traveling to Mexico. Going to Mexico in the evening. And uh, Krishna willing, in a few months I may come back. Let's see, whatever he, he had. He has planned for me. <laughs> I always, when I plan something, I said, if Krishna so desires. 
man propose, God disposes. The important thing is to always have faith in Krishna. You know how do you know how we make advancement in Krishna consciousness? Increasing our faith. Increasing our faith in Krishna. The more strong faith we have, the more that faith can take us back to Krishna when it is strong. Nothing else. Very good. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I should have proper Haribo.